Hi, everybody, and welcome to Unapologetic Live. I'm your host, Amla Epinobi, and you know we love to bring guests on the show, especially guests who are doing the work that we feel like needs to be done in today's time. But before I introduce our guest for today, let's talk about the subject matter. So often when we're talking about race in America, gender in America, we have our conservative end of the things uh, who, who go, you know, that really doesn't matter that much to me. That doesn't really make up your identity. It doesn't tell me who you are as an individual. And then we have the extreme left, the extreme progressives who go, you know what? Being black is important. Being white is oppressive. Your gender matters, your sexuality matters. And in fact, we need to start having these conversations at an age that constantly gets younger and younger and younger. And with that sort of ideology, we've seen critical race theory be infiltrated into our schools, gender theory come in second, and now our kids are being taught this very same ideology. Is it helpful? I'd venture to say it's not helpful to pit little black and little white kids against each other and tell one that they're oppressed and the other that they're oppressors. But we have another side of the aisle who says, this is exactly what should be happening. You know me, I've learned the whole critical race theory gamut back when I was a young person before I even knew that it was critical race theory. And what did I become? A far left activist. So what happens when you allow that ideology to be injected into all of our public institutions, particularly with very young, malleable minds? Are we gonna have millions of other activists be born out of that? I'd venture to say yes, but on today's show, we have a father who's speaking out and standing up against this sort of ideology. His name is Jerome Eisenberg. His kids go to a school called Brentwood in Los Angeles. And Brentwood School in Los Angeles was trying to bring in critical race theory, pit the kids against each other, separate them by race in, in a deranged fashion. And he has decided to sue them. So Jerome, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Of course. Uh, so like I said, we always like to highlight people who are doing the work. And right now you're doing the work. That's my job. <laughs> you're bringing a lawsuit against this school in particular. But before we get to that, I want to know, how did this happen? And how did you find out that your kids were being taught this stuff? Well, um, in September of 2020, we School starts. My mm -hmm. daughter had gone to the school in seventh grade, had a great experience. Mm -hmm. uh, eighth grade starts, and we have a open house the first day of school for the English literature and curriculum. Mm -hmm. Completely changed, really? right? No longer To Kill a Mockingbird, no Hemingway, no Shakespeare, no uh, other well-vetted historical significant literature where you can learn to write and you learn how to critically think and understand pro uh, the understand uh, uh, the written language and in its place was Ibrahim Kandi mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, a couple books called justice about uh, uh, you know uh, the African American experience mm -hmm. and another about uh, Filipino drug dealers and which my argument wasn't that this literature is not important, mm -hmm. that this literature shouldn't be incorporated. But it it is ironically exclusive mm -hmm. when it, nothing else is taught. Or, or when he show, shows up for history and it's the 1619 Project. Right. Right? So that's great. However, when you're 12 years old, should that be your introduction to history? <laughs> should that be, uh, you, should you need to be taught that Abraham Lincoln was not really an American hero, or Thomas Jefferson was a bad guy, or you know, President Trump is the worst president in the history of the country. I don't know. I don't think that's part of the curriculum. That's not what I paid for. Right. right, certainly, when you're sending your kids to a very nice private school, and even if you're not, if your kids are in public school and, and they're learning these sorts of things, you as a parent should have a right to go, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> I think there's another side to this story here, and it seems like they weren't getting that other side. No, 100%, not of that. There was you were excluded if your opinion was different, mm -hmm. right? Isn't part of the great uh, concept of education is everyone should have a seat at a table? You shouldn't be excluded because your thought process or your concept of what is right or wrong is so different. Or you should be made to feel stupid. Should you be made to feel? Uh, they told me that we're educators mm -hmm. and you don't know what your kids need today to learn. Mm. We have to capture the hearts and minds of your kids in eighth grade, or we will lose them forever. I mean, it was kind of a slap in the face. Oh, absolutely. And it seems like that extreme side of things is constantly saying, you know, no more parents' rights. We're the ones who are going to step in. We're the ones who are responsible for what your kids learn. I am curious, uh, how did you, did you find out this was happening? Did your kids come to you and say, Dad, look at this curriculum here? Or did you stumble upon it? Well, we the, it was stumbled the first week of school. We mm -hmm. had meetings uh, yeah. with all the teachers and mm -hmm. we get all these 
we're going like, wait a second, for yeah. the past 20 years, you've taught all this. Yeah. And now we're teaching something completely different. Mm -hmm. And then it was subsequently, it was like some latent anti-Semitism that we felt at the school. And then there was seminars on uh, white, Robin DeAngelo's white privilege. They give the whole school the day off to read that book. Oh, wow. Yeah, the whole school. And then uh, for the kids, they had a seminar in white privilege and, and anti-racism. And my point is, I can teach that at home. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not asking you to teach that without clearing it through me. So what was your next step? You see this curriculum, you see what they're trying to usher in. Clearly there's a bit of frustration here about what is being taught to your children. What do you do next? Write a letter. Do okay. it, what's a normal, rational person do? You write a letter, you make a phone call, mm -hmm. right? And the responses kept getting denser and denser and more marginalized and you, uh, and the reactions from the school were more systemically, uh, not racist, but like they were trying to be not racist, but they ended up being systemically exclusionary. They had hired millions of dollars worth of DEI consultants mm. and they wanted to get to the root of the school to make it a holistically better school, but everything was broken up into race. So the African-American families had one DEI group, the Hispanic, the Jews, the, Islam, uh, the Muslims, and no other group could join any other group or have a conversation. Yeah, and it, I, I could not believe that that when I was hearing this, because I had heard about this as this was happening, it was making the news, and I thought there's no way they're separating people. And I look it up and there it goes white staff, black staff, white faculty, black faculty. Right. It's amazing isn't that, to see. I mean, isn't that, how is that not systemically exclusionary, which is the opposite of being inclusionary. And it's more insulting based upon all right, for ideas. All right, you don't have to associate with people you don't agree with philosophically, but you can't separate people mm -hmm. based on identity, right? It just right. seems weird. Yes, and there's so much more to our children than their skin color and their gender, although they would love for you to think the opposite. And you made an important point. They will package this sort of ideology in, in beautiful words like anti-racism. But when you get to the heart of it, it really is racism and segregation. And you'll see that you'll see that very clearly. It's very blatant. So were were there other parents who hopped on the bandwagon with you and went, this is not right and we want to fight yes, this? Yes, there were a number of parents who started the process. But you have to remember, this is a very seminal point in time. Mm -hmm. And people are afraid of being canceled, right? right? People who at this school were lawyers and doctors and executives. And if they came out on the wrong side of this, mm -hmm they would be canceled. They would lose their jobs. I mean, there was other schools had groups that were fighting this, but they would modulate their voices mm. and uh, black out their faces or, and it, it's crazy time. And uh, like I said, doesn't everybody deserve a seat at the table? Doesn't everybody have a voice that needs to be heard? And if you keep separating people, then what are we going to accomplish as a group or as a country? You're absolutely right. And, and, this is what matters is there are so many people who see this and they go, I know this is wrong, but I am too scared to come forward. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want the backlash from my community. Or your kids. Yes. Or your kids. Right. You don't want your kids to go, dad, why are you, why are you it's showing up at the school? Mortified. <laughs> Will you stop, right? I'm known as the daughter of the crazy guy. Did you have that reaction from your kids with this? You know, it's just, uh. It's not easy. How's that? Uh, right? I can, you want a, a 14 year old once she started when 12, by the time you're 14, you want to fit in. Right. Right. It's hard to change schools, mm -hmm. but it doesn't pass the smell test. No, right? it absolutely doesn't. And and I think the, those children, they will learn that further down the line and you're doing something good, so. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, and uh, what I'm curious, you said you, you wrote these letters to the school and then you got these increasingly just delusional responses back from the administrators there. When did it come to a head where you thought, okay, no, we're putting in a lawsuit against this? Well, first we applied out to a different school, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the school would be engaging, but they would only meet you one-on-one, -on -one, right? Mm -hmm. You couldn't meet with a group. There's no community forum. There was no clearance, you know, uh, of thought or, or, or curriculum uh, proposals. And it, it kept getting increasingly uh, strident in their opinions, right? They were more exclusionary toward the end. And once we got into another school, mm -hmm. they decided we shouldn't come back. We, they, we had an option to come back. And once we got accepted to another school, they eliminated that option to come back. Mm -hmm. And there were a number of what I felt were like latently anti-Semitic issues occurring. Okay. And um, finally enough was enough. You know, like what, what's Bob Marley say? 
get up, stand up. Right? <laughs> I love it. And that was about the, I was, I was, I was it. I mean, somebody has to do it. I'm not, I've never sued anybody. Yeah. Right. And finally, all these parents are wringing their hands and stressed out and somebody has to do something. Somebody has to say something. All right. So I went from a nobody to somebody. That's fantastic. And that's important because so often the bystander effect can just settle in there. And a lot of people will look at the dumpster fire right in front of yeah. them and go, somebody should put that out. <laughs> right. right. And nobody puts it out. No, but they hold your kids hostage over you. Yes. And who wants to, I don't know if you have kids, but who wants to really um, have their kids disrupted? Yeah, I don't have kids at the moment, guys. I'm waiting for this stuff to clear up before any of that happens. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll let you put out the dumpster fire and okay. then we'll worry about Thank that. Thank you. <laughs> Homeschool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you're in the thick of this right now. Before we close out, you know, what, what is this process going to look like for you? You've now signed yourself up for what could be a very long and arduous battle. I stepped into it. Yeah. But as I tell my family, sometimes the only way through, the only way out is through. Yep. And, um, you know, we just got to see where it ends up. Um, I'm mm -hmm. here to fight. Um, they're painting me as a nut, irrational, you know, person. I, mm -hmm. I don't think I am. I hope I'm not coming. You don't sound like it. I'm I, not scared at the moment. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right. The knife is then. No. Um, <laughs> but um, it's just uh, we'll get through it and we'll win. And there's a lot more going on. And I don't think that the school is going to want to have uh, what's the emperor with no clothes exposed. Right. Right. And I think what you're doing right now is going to be the first of many instances of this happening, not only in California, but probably nationwide with what parents are seeing now in their school's curriculum. What is your advice to the parents who are going to be watching this right now and going, you know what, this is happening in my community. I know it's happening, but I'm too scared. Well, it's hard to do it alone. So mm -hmm. if you get a group together, there's power in numbers. Mm -hmm. But at some point when you're mad as hell, you just can't take it anymore. All right. Mm -hmm. You have to stand up. And you have to just do what's the right thing. If you see an injustice, if you see a wrong, if you see something that's blatantly violating what the principles of justice and equality in America, mm -hmm. stand up, do the right thing. Fantastic. A, a beautiful message. And I think we're going to close out on one more beautiful message because I have to ask you the most pressing question of all, which is why do you care about all this? Why not just let your kids be taught what they're going to be taught and at the dinner table you can fix it uh, that night? I guess that's where we started, but it was more like just the egregious, disrespectful behavior coming back, mm -hmm. right? I, I am not a radical in terms of my thought, but to be told that I don't know what my children need that I am not as knowledgeable mm -hmm. as the people who are teaching them is an insult. And for their, them to disregard anything that even I have to say, or many of the other parents, uh, we are considered like uh, unworthy of their uh, consideration. Right. So you know what? Here you go. I offered, I wrote them why I thought they were wrong, and they said sue us. Mm. So there you go. And so we shall. <laughs> So <laughs> Amazing. That is fantastic. And I hope you guys were truly listening to that message. You are not a radical or an extremist for calling this stuff out. In fact, what I think we're going to see is just a revolution of normal people going, wait a second. I, I know these things all sound great, but you're not doing something that's great. And you're certainly not going to infiltrate my kids' minds with this. So take note of what's happening here and, and find out if there's a way that you can start implementing these practices in your own life. You don't have to go and file an entire lawsuit against your school board, but there are little things that you can do to advocate for your kids day in and day out where other people would like to see you absolutely not do that. And Jerome is one of those people who stood up for his children and is going to continue this fight. This could be a years long fight with sometimes how, how long we see these lawsuits go on. So thank you so much for doing thank what you. you're doing and setting this Appreciate precedent. It. Thank you for being on.